Yeah, I drew the short straw and got to follow the happy parents. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be a little bit more boring. But as someone says, my name is Connor Curley and I'm a dietitian. I'm the only dietitian member currently um, of the Plant-Based Soccer Team for Schneider. Um, so who am I? Uh, well, if anybody uses Twitter or Facebook, please feel free to comment or uh, shoot me any feedback or anything like that. Um, so I first got into nutrition, if everybody can hear at the back as well. Um, I first got into nutrition um, because I was diagnosed myself at age 15 with multiple sclerosis, and that really changed my outlook in life. This talk is not going to be about me or about multiple sclerosis, thankfully, um, but it led me to go on and study human nutrition and diabetes at Trinity College. Um, in fact, the only guy in the class. Um, so from there, I went on and did my PhD. Um, <laughs> uh, graduation picture. And uh, this is me graduating uh, with the thumbs up, with hope. Um, and we went on and published quite a few papers and won quite a few awards. Uh, but as I say, this is just a tidy little bit about me. Um, so I graduated from Trinity, did my PhD at UCD, worked at many universities and hospitals. I'm an active member of the Irish Nutrition and Biotetics Institute, the Nutrition Society, the Irish Blood Pressure Council, and the British Association of Cardiopulmonary uh, Rehabilitation as well. Um, I currently lecture in technology from the University of Dublin and the University of College Dublin. And I'm also a dietetics consultant, consultant and speaker. Uh, so, um, it has come full circle and I've just released a couple of uh, articles about my own story and also the evidence for multiple sclerosis and plant based nutrition. If anybody's interested, please feel free to contact me and I can send you those things. Absolutely no problem. But as I say, that's it. No more about me, no more about MS. So, what I'm here to talk to you about is um, micro micronutrients and the adequacy of plant based nutrition. So, we know the insufficient micronutrients. When we talk about micronutrients, we're talking mostly about vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, and so on. As short term and long term implications for diseases. So, for example, if we don't eat enough vitamin C for a couple of weeks, it increases our risk of infection very quickly, within a week or two. Um, but it also can increase risk of heart disease, cancer, and chronic diseases in the longer term. And that's what I'm going to speak about for the rest of this talk. Okay. So I'm going to talk about some nutrients which aren't found in plant foods, some nutrients of concern which can be found if we eat the right foods, and then some nutrients which are found in the body. So not found in plant foods. So prizes. Anybody think? There's probably four components of plant foods, or not found in plant foods. So hopefully you'll all get the B, twelve. Anything else? D, D three specifically. Anything else? Iodine. Iodine. Not quite. Uh, a little bit tricky. Vitamin A or preformed vitamin A, which is called retinol, and then finally cholesterol. Okay? So let's talk about manure. So turns out cholesterol is a component, and it is a component of plant of animal foods and really of all animal foods. Um, but it's not found in plant foods. It's essential to humans, not in the diet, but in, uh, in, in the body. Human cell walls and some hormones made out of cholesterol, so for example, it's uh, testosterone, estrogens. Activated in the green corn class as well. So, the rule for cholesterol, and um, my point of work is it's found in every single animal food, but it's not found in any plant food. Okay? But it's made in our liver, we have no dietary need, and it may be unhealthy. And I say maybe because it's very difficult to separate the, the uh, effect of dietary cholesterol and other uh, animal foods. So, that's, that's cholesterol in a nutshell. We do not need to consume it. So vitamin A, or retinol, retinol, preformed vitamin A, it's not available in plant, in plant foods, not at all. Okay? It's important for bone, bone growth, cell division, differentiation, immunity. We know that frank vitamin A deficiency causes total and night blindness, but this is rarely rare in the, plant, in the Western world. In fact, I'm only aware of one case which I've ever seen personally, and of the, an infant or child with severe fibrosis who had fat malabsorption. Was absorbed in fat soluble vitamin A and was rapidly cured with vitamin A supplements. We know that uh, vitamin A deficiency may increase infection risk, increase growth rate, and so on, but again, very rare in, in the developed world. But if we look, there's actually another uh, type of vitamin A called beta carotene, which, uh, if you actually kind of visualize, it's basically like retinol uh, back to back. Okay? So our body chops it in half, and then we have retinol. And the conversion is not one to one. We need about 12 uh, components of, or 12 units of beta carotene to get one unit of retinol. 
But that's why anybody in the front is like, not going to really So where do you get the carotene? <laughs> you get carotene. I love this one in the middle. But also uh, in, in green vegetables and peppers. But really anything orange and yellow it has lots and lots of green vegetables. Um, so certainly not a, a problem. However, too much vitamin A is a problem. Hypervitamin O is, is a problem. It impairs the effect of vitamin D. Uh, moderate consumption of retinol may cause bone toxicity. Or in developed countries, vitamin A toxicity is much more uh, common than deficiency. Okay? So eating too much fat soluble retinol is more of a problem than not getting enough. And we know that excess vitamin A increases mortality by 16%. So too much vitamin A, pre formed vitamin A, increases mortality. Uh, just as a sidetrack, I was lucky enough to be in Tasmania roughly this time last year, and a lot of the Antarctic exploration started in Tasmania because it's probably one of the closest landmasses in Antarctic. And um, there was a very famous uh, explorer, and he brought his, ex his, uh, his team to the Antarctic. They hit really adverse weather conditions, had to turn back, ended up uh, first of all eating the dogs, and then um, including the livers, and everybody on the team died except for the leader because he, didn't, he let his team the dogs first as such. Now I'm not going to talk about eating dogs, but most of the team died of vitamin A toxicity from eating a dog's liver. So whatever you take away from today, don't eat dog's liver. <laughs> <laughs> okay? But vitamin A, not a problem, especially for these yellow and orange vegetables. Okay. You've all, you will have all heard that pregnant ladies should avoid liver, and again, why liver specifically? Hypervitamin O to say, and they need the birth defects, central nervous system disorders. However, well, we can't get too much beta carotene. Beta carotene is water soluble, um, or at least to an extent, and we can excrete it um, much more readily than vitamin A. So, again, an advantage for uh, animals. So, again, vitamin D, I've done a lot of work on vitamin D, really important for lots of different things, uh, not just bones. We know there's two types. So, we've got vitamin D2 or ergocalciform. This is found mostly in irradiated mushrooms. It's not found in ordinary mushrooms. The mushrooms need to go in some day before you eat them, or they will not have any vitamin D2. Okay? But we know it's less effective than D3, it's less bioavailable, of course, the ability and shorter duration. Whereas D3, that's what we make on our skin when we're exposed to sunlight. And it's also what's found in animal foods, and most supplements have to contain vitamin D3 in animal foods. And why is that important? Because it's substantially more potent. Okay. So this is a graph. I'd say I'm a dietitian. I love talking about diet, eat the foods, don't take the supplements. So this shows some of the foods. So we say the recommended daily allowance in Ireland is maybe six to eight hundred units, depending on your age. And the supplement here is two thousand units per day. If you eat oily fish, you're probably going to need one to two large portions a day, every single day, just to get the bare minimum. If you eat, uh, if you talk about fortified dairy products again, you're going to have to eat quite a lot of them. Uh, the sunshine in a vitamin D glass, uh, or in a, in a glass, uh, that's not quite true. Okay? Eggs, we hear all the time, egg is source of vitamin D. You're going to have to eat several dozen eggs just to get the bare minimum. Several dozen every day. Okay? So it's really difficult. And of course, you, most of you can notice what's missing from the graph is sunlight. So if we talk about Caucasian skin, 20 minutes of sunlight in a bathing suit is going to give you 20,000 minutes. And now here's your supplement, now here's your recommended allowance, and now here's some oily fish. Okay? And this is why if you measure levels are higher in the summer than in the winter, even in rainy, cold Ireland. Okay? So if you want to get enough from your diet, you're going to have to be like our friend Gollum and eat a bucket of oily fish every day. Okay? So nutrients from diet, not quite good enough. So curly rule, your shadow must be shorter in your body to be I was in Australia roughly this time last year. This is a picture of me in my granddog jersey um, in Melbourne in uh, January. You can see my shadow nice and short. This is me two weeks later in Dublin. You can see my shadow. Now obviously it's summer and winter, but it doesn't matter where in the world you are, what time of day it is, or how much clothes you are or aren't wearing. Look at your shadow. If it's really long, no vitamin D production. If it's quite short, possible, but you need to get your skin. Okay? So in winter in Ireland, no sun, no vitamin D production. And you're going to need to supplement, and obviously we need to individualize that, but probably a thousand units per day is a good starting point. Okay, so B12. So 
really, really crucial modes for blood formation, neurological function, and much more. Uh, it's not made by humans, but it's also not made by plants. It's also not made by animals. It's made by microorganisms. These are found in the soil or in intestines, including human intestines. Now, human intestines are not a reliable source of human intestines. <laughs> uh, even your own. Uh, so there's no reliable natural plant source of human intestines. So we need to ensure a steady supply. So what do we do? Oh, if we don't ensure a steady supply, uh, these are recent surveys done in the UK. We don't have Irish data quite yet. UK and USA are showing 60. Over 50% of vegetarians and vegans have vitamin B12 deficiency. And that was mostly so clinical. And that is really, really disappointing and really dangerous. Um, because vitamin B12 deficiency is really simple to correct. Sorry, it's really simple to prevent. But it's not always really simple to treat. Okay? So very simple. So how do we prevent it? So regularly eat foods fortified with B12. Cereals, soy, and um, lots of different plant-based products are specifically fortified with B12. And supplement on a daily or weekly basis. Some people find that it suits their schedule better to take a weekly supplement, and that's fine. Uh, and daily is fine as well. And luckily there's very low toxicity, toxicity associated with B12. Some other nutrients of concern. Calcium, iodine, iron, zinc, omega-3 fatty acids, and protein. So, oh my god, what are we doing? Okay, so calcium. So, lots of different uh, important roads. We know that it can be found in green vegetables. You, you might notice I don't have spinach up there, because spinach is not a good source. There is calcium in there, but it's not uh, bioavailable. Very bioavailable from green vegetables. Um, also beans, maybe chickpeas, but others as well. Sesame seeds, tofu, and especially if it's selling calcium, um, and then fortified products as well. So quite easy, as long as someone eats a variety of whole plant foods to get um, And compared to those eating an omnivorous diet, there is some evidence that eating a plant-based diet, you actually need less calcium. So you can have just a strong skeletal uh, structure by eating much, much less calcium. But those eating plant-based diets have healthy problems, and that's been proven over and over again despite often having a lower intake of calcium. So bone health, it's not just about calcium. Exercise, sauna, vitamin D, and fruits and vegetables are important as well. Okay, so if we move on to iodine, we know it's a component of thyroid hormones, which help regulate the metabolism. And iodine deficiency can cause goiter, too much or too little. And, and iodine really is found in the sea. Okay, so Ireland, little small island, we should be getting plenty of iodine. We don't need a huge amount of seaweed food or seaweed products in Ireland anyway, but seaweed is actually a really good source, as is iodine salt and other fortified foods, cap supplements, and then iodine supplements if somebody avoids these foods, and um, especially in the end of pregnancy. It's becoming more and more important. But even fruits and vegetables and potatoes grown near the, the shore have lots of iodine. We move on to iron, really, really uh, important, really interesting. Uh, we've heard lots about iron. So we've two main, main sources, so heme iron and non-heme. Think about heme, just think about it like hemoglobin. So blood, where is there blood and where is there not blood? Okay. So for example, I used to think it was animal versus plant, but for example, chicken is not a heme iron and you know, eggs are not heme iron, but they're still animal based. Okay. So easiest example is black pudding, um, but red meats and so on. Non-heme iron, lots of legumes, uh, some uh, food vegetables as well. So iron, really interestingly, there is no route for excretion once iron is absorbed. So we absorb it, we have no um, natural route for excretion. So some eating populations of iron stores far in their excess of those needed for health. So too much iron is being detrimental as well. Um, most people will be aware of the famous Birmingham study where cholesterol was identified as a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. 13% of people had too much iron, whereas only 3% had um, iron deficiency or insufficient iron. So really this is a big problem. And it's associated with higher risk of chronic disease, too much iron. In fact, high heme, specifically high heme intake, associated with increased risk of several cancers, as well as increased risk of diabetes, carrying heart disease, and um, this is compelling evidence. So too much being just as bad as too little. In fact, lower absorption of iron from plant-based foods may be an advantage. This may be one of the advantages of a plant-based diet. And I don't have time, but I know Tom showed some of them studies linking heme iron and heme iron containing foods with chronic diseases. Okay? 
So the zinc, you can call it the zinc next, and really important roles. Deficiency can cause growth retardation, especially in children, and lots of other problems as well. But the sources, again, grain, whole grain, nuts, seeds, beans. These are the cornerstones of a plant-based diet. And if somebody is eating these foods on a daily or, or most days of the week, zinc is not going to be a problem. Okay, so zinc and iron and can be inhibited by phytates, which just so happen to be found in lots of plant foods. We know that vitamin C increases absorption of these minerals and these more important minerals. So where do we get vitamin C? Fresh fruits and vegetables. So again, if you're eating your grains and your beans with vitamins, or sorry, with uh, fruits and vegetables, we're going to be doing okay. Also, avoidance of tea and coffee with food, so not to be from you know, your latte with your dinner or whatever. And also, garlic and onion increase absorption. And again, it's a pity the happy pear guy got by the guys are gone, but sometimes I wonder do they have a garlic farm or something, because the amount of garlic into some of their recipes. If you follow their recipes, you're probably doing okay for iron. Okay, essential fatty acids. So humans can make fat from any source. Okay? We can, we can overconsume, for example, sugar or something like that, and end up becoming overweight um, because we've had uh, too much calories. Turns out there's two essential fatty acids which can't be made in the body. So they're essential must be consumed. So we've got linoleic and linoleic acids, so building blocks for specialized fats called omega-3 and omega-6. And apologies, and I'm sure you're well aware of this biochemistry. And we know deficiencies of these essential fatty acids are linked to numerous uh, issues. Um, um, uh, we know that they can be elongated inside the human body and uh, form long chain omega-3 fatty acids. So the sources of omega-6 would include vegetables, seeds, nuts, grains, vegetable oils. Omega-3 probably a little bit more difficult to get, so flax seed oils called linseed, chia seeds, hemp seeds, walnuts as well, and some soy products as well. In Ireland we eat way too much omega-6 and not enough omega-3, um, but we generally hear about uh, oily fish as being the source, but it certainly is not the oily only source. So, Long chain fatty acids are present, and only short chain fatty acids are present in plants. So not the long chains. We humans can make the long chains, but the rate varies and it's unpredictable. In other words, if I eat some short chain omega three and you do, our conversion rate might be quite different. And different. And vegans commonly have lower circulating levels of long chain fatty acids than non vegans. And this is quite interesting. And we need to ensure a steady supply of essential fatty acids whether we're vegetarian, vegan, plant-based, or not. Um, and therefore, consider supplementing algae-based DHA and EPA, some seaweeds, and of course, even uh, the foods which we have seen back here as well. Um, interesting, I didn't quite put it in before we get on to protein. There is evidence that eating an algae inflammatory uh, uh, nutritional uh, composition as such um, actually uh, upregulates the um, production of long-chain body acids. And that's what we would be doing by uh, so if we move on to protein, so I love this picture. You know, no meat. But where do you get your protein coming from the guys with the chicken legs and you know um, for increased risk of chronic disease and so on? And I personally am not aware of any uh, cases of protein deficiency um, unless somebody's not eating enough food. So to not get enough protein calories is really difficult. Even if you just had spinach, you still get enough protein. And um, you really have to eat quite a lot of spinach. But the, the point is, if you eat foods, real foods, you're going to get enough protein. You can get uh, protein deficiency maybe from just eating oil and sugar all the time. But we have some grains and some beans and some fruits and some vegetables. It really, really is quite simple. Um, we obviously know protein is really important for lots of things. Um, I've up here the amino acids. So we've heard about essential amino acids and non essential. Um, we generally hear that animal protein is high quality, whereas vegetable protein is incomplete. And this already makes you think, okay, plants are not so good. Um, and the reason this is, uh, is called incomplete is because one of the amino acids is lower than the others. It's not because that food is lacking the bit, that amino acid, it's because that amino acid is not in the same quantity as others. Whereas in animal proteins, generally you have all amino acids. So, for example, grains lack uh, lysine, whereas beans lack methionine. And um, in the past, combining grain, grains and beans, sorry, type of up, not brown beans, at the same meal to provide uh, complete protein. And this is what I was taught in the university. But we know that plant protein can meet requirements when a variety of plant foods is consumed, 
and energy needs are met. So variety, whole plant foods, and energy needs are met. So you eat enough food, you eat a variety of foods, and they're whole plant foods. You don't need to worry about combining. Okay? Research indicates an assortment of plant foods, even more <coughs> can provide all essential amino acids and adequate nitrogen content. Plus, complementary proteins do not need to be consumed. Do not need to bring out your measuring uh, jug at each meal to make sure you're getting enough uh, amino acids. So this is the famous actor Michael Clark from, um, from the Green Mile and other movies. And um, this is Patrick uh, from I can't remember I can't pronounce his second name I should say. And um, he's a, a bodybuilder from Germany, one of the world's more strongest men. He's a uh, my best um, I love this as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. For sure. Okay. So nutrients of abundance. We're going to try and finish on a positive note. So phytochemicals. Does anybody know what phyto means? Plants. Okay. So phytochemicals, phytonutrients. They're literally only found in plants. There's probably a tiny quantity in, in grass-fed beef because they eat plants, but I'd rather get it from the plants than the grass-fed. <coughs> Antioxidants. Vitamin C, E. There's lots of others. Flavonoids, uh, polyphenols, and so on. Fiber, potassium, and so on. And phytochemicals are really interesting. We won't see them on a food label, but we know they're really, really important. And in fact, a, a study was just published up in a blueberry, some of you might have read it, showing that the majority of the blueberry blood pressure lowering effect was due to the blue anthocyanins in blueberries, not the vitamin C, not the vitamin D, and so on. We're just slow to catch on. And these are all in vegan and whole plant foods. So we move on to antioxidants. So I always say to my patients, if you think about that oxidation, it's literally when you take an apple, a bite of an apple, and it turns brown. It takes a couple of uh, minutes, that is oxidation happening right in front of your eyes. You can stop it by chopping an apple in half and putting some lemon juice on top. Lemon juice contains lots of antioxidants. Also, literally, a nail rusting is oxidation of that. Okay? And that's what happens on a, you know, a less exaggerated uh, um, pathway in, in the cellular level. So a really famous study, the antioxidant content of food varies several times in the So you can pick between low or really high antioxidant foods. Bags comprise mainly of animal-based foods or low and antioxidants, their words not mine. Bags place mainly in the variety of plant foods or antioxidants rich. Okay. Thousands of biochemical antioxidant phytochemicals found in plants. Again, their words. Okay, fiber. Roughage. We hear about fiber and roughage, okay? And uh, probably more important than that, keeps your follow for longer. Helps your blood sugars and your blood cholesterol levels, not down here. Also feeds your intestinal bacteria. And we're hearing more and more about the gut microbiome. And some of you might know uh, or might have heard of uh, Dennis Burkett, who's from uh, Enniskerry, or Enniskillen, I should say, sorry. And um, don't forget fiber in your diet, and he was in fact called a fiber man. Pretty cool. But he said if you have a small stool, you have to have large stomach. <laughs> you can make it that much more. Um, I always think Burkett's ward in James Hospital where do not get a high fiber diet. Okay, so prices, where do we find fiber? It's a simple rule. Okay? It's found in no animal products and it's found in all animal products. So you eat the plant foods, they're nice and happy. You eat animal foods, they're not so happy. Okay? Like the children in the school of the twin brothers. Potassium, it's crucial for heart function and so on. 2% of US adults meet the minimum recommended recommendations for uh, I couldn't find updated figures in Ireland, but I imagine it's pretty similar. Okay. Source of potassium, beans, leafy greens, potatoes, squash, and so on and so forth. So why are so many few people uh, getting the recommendations? Because they're not eating these things. Okay? So, not eating, so when somebody says you need more potassium, you need more of those things. Magnesium, again, really important roles. So whole grains, leafy greens, legumes, and nuts. So hopefully you can kind of see the consistency now that if you have somebody who's eating lots of chips and coke and Oreos, that's not a whole food plant-based diet. All of these nutrients are going to be concerned. But if you're centering around grains and leafy greens and so on, these nutrients do not have to be concerned. Folate, quite interesting. Uh, this is a folic acid supplement, um, 400 micro micrograms. And for one portion of leeks, spinach, uh, uh, peppers, and so on, you can get up there and one to two portions of Vegetables, fruits and vegetables, So dietary nitrate, I have to cheat and say I put this in because I did some research on this. I'm only figuring it out. 
So it's a component of vegetables, but only some vegetables, or most green vegetables. Inside the body it converts to a gas. The gas is called nitric oxide, and you will all be aware of that. And um, so nitric oxide um, was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1998. So where do you get it? Your green vegetables, mostly spinach um, and rocket, but also beetroot and move on. Try to take supplements as much as possible, to take the foods, uh, not the supplements. This is what's contained in a, a, leaf, a leaf of spinach. You'll never find that in the next supplement. Exceptions are B12 and vitamin D, and potentially long chain fatty acids. So just want to finish uh, very quickly by showing the American Academy of Diet Nutrition Dietetics say an appropriate plan, vegetarian and vegan diets are helpful, adequate, and may provide health benefits for the prevention and treatment of chronic disease. And we've heard about that already. They're appropriate for all stages of life, including pregnancy and lactation and infancy as well. They're more environmentally sustainable than uh, uh, product, uh, diets rich in animal products. They can consume excuse me, less natural sources of resources and are uh, associated with less environmental. So summary, eat a wide variety of whole plant foods, focus on veg, fruits, legumes, and whole grains, with some seeds and nuts. In short, a steady supply of vitamin B12, if you're eating a plant-based diet only, and consider omega-3 vitamin B and I. So, what many people might have heard of Michael Pollan, he's a journalist, he says the best, <coughs> not too much, most of plants, and I really can't say anything. So before you make any slight start, change to speak to a high care professional, but you're a life, you're a high care professional. So thank you, and uh, if anybody has any questions, I'll be around. Uh,